protein is my life. I eat protein, I drink protein, I sleep protein. These days, protein is synonymous with animal products, and most meals are built around a meat centerpiece. The first question people ask you when you stop eating meat is, where do you get your protein? People are really protein obsessed. For decades, the meat and dairy industry has bombarded us with catchy slogans and posters to encourage us to eat animal products for protein. So what is protein? Protein is made up of 20 amino acids, which are the building blocks of the human body. Of these 20 amino acids, there are eight or nine that our body does not make. So we must consume these in food. These are called the essential amino acids. Each source of protein has a different arrangement of amino acids, which our body breaks down and puts together to form whatever protein we need. Animal products and soy products are called complete proteins because they have plenty of the essential amino acids within them. However, most plant proteins lack one or more essential amino acid. There is a persistent myth that vegetarians have to be very intelligent and combine different sources of proteins to make sure they don't become protein deficient. But the research shows otherwise, showing that vegans and vegetarians get plenty of essential amino acids and that their protein is well within the range. So providing you're eating enough calories, your protein requirements are completely met. The largest study in history of those eating plant-based diets recently compared the nutrient profiles of about 30,000 non-vegetarians to 20,000 vegetarians, and about 5,000 vegans, flexitarians, and no meat except fish eaters, allowing us to finally put to rest the perennial question, do vegetarians get enough protein? The average requirement is 42 grams of protein a day. Non-vegetarians get way more than they need, and so does everyone else. On average, vegetarians and vegans get 70% more protein than they need every day. But how much protein do we actually need? So the World Health Organization in the 70s wanted to answer this very question. So they did an extensive study and it shows that we actually need very little protein. So the recommendations are 5% for women and men and 6% for pregnant females, which includes a safe margin. So put simply, you have to be starving to be protein deficient. So it's quite ironic that we actually worry about this so much, considering our culture is uh, completely excessive. <laughs> One thing I really want to make mention is that most foods have protein in it, and most foods have above 5%. So as you can see in this diagram here, we really don't have to worry too much. So the body's greatest need for protein is in the first two years of our life. And the preferred food source for babies is breast milk. How much protein does breast milk have? It's actually 6%. In a two year period, a baby doubles in size. So you can see great need for protein. The protein percentage is still 6%. What about too much animal protein? Unlike fat, protein cannot be stored. Excess animal protein is linked to kidney disease, osteoporosis, cancer, and cardiovascular disease, and type 2 diabetes. Even lean looking meats are associated with high amounts of cholesterol and high amounts of saturated fats. So you can see you can get too much of a good thing, and in this case, protein is one of them. So if you're eating animal products and you're thinking about going plant-based and you're worried about the protein question, all you have to do is replace your animal proteins with plant-based alternatives, like grains, vegetables, legumes, and fruit. And providing you're eating a good variety of plant foods and you're eating enough, you really don't have to worry about protein ever again. So next time you're eating a steak for protein, consider this. If you have any questions about protein, please let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.